just want to say welcome to everybody on the call today. Um, today, I'm gonna, I've got a very special visitor. We're going to be talking about family business. And what, one of the things I've noticed running a business coaching organization is over the past 10 years, um, a, a, over half the people that we talk to have some sort of family connection within their business. So I, I went out and I sought expert advice. And uh, there's a fellow that's joining me today, Rob Hillier, who's been basically dealing with couples, relationships, families, business, psychology, personality, profiling, so many different areas that I thought he'd be the best person to talk about this. So I'd like to welcome Rob to the call today. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, David. How are you? Very good. Very good. Look, on today's call, obviously, we've talked about the five dangers facing yep. family businesses. So um, we'll get into that in a moment. But maybe if we can just start off with a bit of your background. We can. That's me. And you'll see there it's, it's called Why Divorce Doesn't Work and it's transforming breakdowns into breakthroughs. And um, I guess I'll say the reason I got into Why Divorce Doesn't Work is because that's what I did and that's what it didn't do. It didn't work. I did divorce. It didn't work. <laughs> and I, I looked at that very carefully. I thought, there's something wrong here. By the way, when I did divorce, I was about 30, oh, too long ago now. I was about, about 35, 36, and I was actually a relationship counsellor. That's pretty funny. And I was actually a relationship counsellor, helping people get through their divorces. And I'm like, and next day, I know, here I am facing my own stuff. I thought, something, something really wrong here. Something not right. Yeah. Look, I met you probably nearly 10 years ago, Rob, and, and the, the, the thing that sort of struck the relationship with us was um, your, your, your background, being yep. a psychologist, your in-depth knowledge of how people work. And uh, we came to one of your relationship workshops. Yes. And so I, I really wanted to scratch beneath the surface because you know, what, what happens in a family business is there's so, there's so much pressure um, because often, and I remember when my wife joined me in, in my business, she said, you know, I don't want to go into business with you because couples in business fight and all they do is talk about work all the time. And it's true to a certain degree. So, you know, we, we talk about, you know, uh, relationships. You talk about divorce and why divorce doesn't work. Yeah. And really when we merge the two, because you've been in business this whole time as well. Um, oh, yeah. It really comes down to really understanding how that ties in. Well, yeah, it's because see, I've remarried, I've remarried again and uh, I'm with Annie, I've been with Annie in business for quite some time. Yeah. And then if I, if I go back back even further than that, I used to be, I was a, a farmer's son. Okay. So I was a farmer's son and guess what? <laughs> My father and I divorced him. I, I said <laughs> bye-bye. Yeah. And that was a, that was a stupid thing, a pretty, pretty silly thing to do at the time it seemed like, but it's the best thing, best thing ever did. So, so I guess I'm really talking about, you know, something was really close to my heart. And and divorce is another word for breakdown. Okay. And, that, and that's what happened. By the way, I've written a book called Why Divorce Doesn't Work. And I say that I'm working with people in difficult relationships. And sometimes I think it's now I'm working with difficult people in relationships. Either way, it still works. But yeah. So really, this, this whole notion of divorce, it's not just about husband, wife. It's also just about family breakdown. It's the whole concept is the same thing. And basically, to, to put it in a nutshell, the reason people go for divorce, the reason people go and, go, and break, go and break down is because they get this problem and they think there is no solution. And yep. if there's one message I want people to get today, and that is that there is a way of go, going around, and hopefully by the end of the day, you'll have you'll know exactly what should happen. Will it be easy? No. It's very, very easy once you've got it, mm. but, but it won't be at the time. Sorry. Yep. That's all right. Fantastic. Okay. So we're going to look at this man. Two things are infinite. Uh, two things are infinite: the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the uh, universe, says Einstein. Yes. And really, the thing which makes people stupid is this next one: emotional. Emotional. It's emotional. Okay. P when when people are being stupid, and when I'm being stupid, I've got to include myself here because I do this too. Yep. When I'm being stupid, I am being emotional. When my daughter's being stupid, she is being emotional. Okay. When my wife is being stupid, she is being emotional. <laughs> Okay. And once we get out of thinking emotionally, because our emotions make, they don't make sense. Yeah. Our emotions are crap. They give us, they make the worst decisions we'll ever make. Worst <laughs> decisions. And we end up by doing that. We sabotage ourselves. Okay. So really what, what you're saying is that uh, what, what drives stupidity is emotion. It's emotion. And emotion usually comes from? Ah, emotion comes from those first seven years. That's when the patterns were set. Okay. Way, way back then, people say, "Ah, oh, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish." That, that can't, that can't matter. Can't matter right back there. It does. It matters, and I will tell you what, um, I'll guarantee you can you can see a lot of your patterns of behaviour, especially the toxic one today, yeah. are to do with those first five or six or seven years right, right back there. I know mine are. Yeah. But then I'm perfect now, so I'm right now. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so really, what you're saying is, you know, we get these patterns set when we're young. 
They're at that, and Sydney. I'm guessing they're coming from our upbringing, our parents, our community, any, anything that influences our, yeah. our formation as yeah. a kid. Uh, and then what happens is we get stuck with these patterns. We get stuck with these patterns. And so then when something doesn't go our way or something doesn't go as expected, we move into this emotional um, thought process, which is almost stupidity. And it no, causes no, us... no, not, not almost. No. It is stupidity. <laughs> it is stupidity. Yeah. And it causes us to do stupid things. And we look back and we say, why did we do that? Oh, yeah. You have a think of the worst decisions you've made. And I guarantee you were totally emotional at the time. I know I was. Yeah. Very, very emotional. Absolutely. I mean, that's an interesting part about the stock market. You know, people say you should buy low and sell high, and inevitably people do the exact opposite. I know. And if people, and I've watched, I've, I've studied Forex traders, yeah. and they get there and they have a really good, have a really good night. Yeah. And next day, because it was night in, in Australia, because they, but anyway, yeah. ne ne next day, they blow it all. Yeah. Because they, they become invincible. That's all emotional. It's emotional. It's just emotional. Excellent. Excellent. So, so we'll be talking a little bit about that today. We are going to be talking, well, there's going, to, there's going to be a write down the background, but there's one other thing I need to bring in, and that is there's also intuition. Okay. So what's the distinction, emotion and intuition? Okay. Emotions are about, they're about feelings. They're, you feel the emotion now. Yep. And they are, about the, they are about the here and now. However, the interesting thing is they're not actually about the here and now because when you're feeling them, the moment you get emotional, you're going back to patterns which are set when you first five or six or seven years usually with the toxic ones. Right. So... When, uh, but they're stimulated by right now. Okay. Whereas intuitions, they're about hunches about your life's purpose. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a really bland statement here, a very, very brave statement, that you can trust your intuitions 100% of the time. They will always give you the right answer. Right. But you can't trust your emotions. And I suppose the big challenge is how do you distinguish the two? How do you distinguish? Because it takes courage to distinguish the two. Yeah. It takes real. And by the way, and... and and as you're going through here, just think about the times when you made the biggest decisions in your life and those then made transformation or, or trans, you know, decisions which transformed your life. And I'll guarantee at the time, you never really knew what was going to happen next, but you just went for it. Right. And that's, but it just felt good. And that's an intuitive hunch. So this is a bit confusing for me. You're talking about a hunch feels good. Yep. But feelings are about now, which yep. are emotions. Yep. So I'm still a bit grey, and you know, I suppose we are we are talking about family businesses, and we're talking about high emotion. Yep. Um, like one thing I've heard is high emotion means low IQ. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> if there's no IQ there at all. So, so I'm still I'm still struggling with this distinction between emotion and intuition. Thank you, because uh, it's it's a very it's probably the biggest one because people look and say emotion and intuition are the same thing. Okay. You know, they they, they talk about body mind spirit. Yeah. Rubbish. Body mind spirit and emotion. <laughs> Right. Because there's those, there are those, those four things in there. Yeah. Because what happens with with um, uh, with emotions is, is people get in there and, and they, 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 they think, okay, I've got to do that because it feel, because emotions are very, very, very um, powerful. They, they'll take you over. Yeah. They'll, you know, the stupidity index goes right up and that takes you over completely. Oh, <laughs> the most intelligent people when they get emotional become absolutely stupid and they will emotionally back themselves. Yeah. They'll say nowhere in the world, you know, and you see this quite, quite time and time again. And this is where family business come. Yeah. Because I know I was born into a family business. Yes. And I know it was all run by emotion. Okay. And, you know, those emotions were crap, you know. And yeah. One day I'm going to tell my father that he was right and I was wrong. I mean, he was wrong. <laughs> he was wrong and you were that's right. That's what he thought. No, I was wrong. I was always right. And he was always wrong, you know. But that's just an emotional thing because, you know, I could tell him that would, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Who, who's right and who's wrong doesn't matter. It just is. You know, and he was doing the best he can. I was doing the best I could, and we just couldn't get the communication going. We're going to talk about that very shortly. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. But where it comes in is this. This is the brain. Okay. And this is what the brain does. The brain, the brain can receive four billion bits of information every second. Okay. We Which know that. Is a lot. <laughs> that's a that's a huge amount, and that's that's all the information out there. Or that's say you're saying. Yeah. However, we can only process. 2 billion, 2,000 bits of information every second. Okay, which is a fraction. Which is one two millionth. One two millionth of the one information two millionth. that's coming in. Yeah. So all the stuff that we're responding to, all the stuff we're seeing now, you and I, well, we're looking here now around this room, and all the stuff we're seeing is 0.0005% of what's there. Right. Okay. Yep. There's another 99.9995% that, that's out there. This is, um, I'm not sure how scientific this is, but, I, but the scientists agree. So, so when we're sort of looking at this stuff, if we're going to look at our, the way our what we know, yep. what we really know, we're only looking at 
0.0005%. That's why things can go wrong so far, so fast. Okay. Now, I'm going to, my concept is that when you can really hook into your intuitions, your intuitions somehow hook into that other lot. Okay. And they, and they hook into it. And what, what's more, they hook into it immediately. And that's why often your intuitions make no sense. Has have you ever had the experience, Dave? Have you ever had the experience of, uh, well, I'm, I don't know, buying a car? Yeah, I've had that experience. Good. And here's, here's my experience. I was driving down the Pean Highway the other day. Yeah. Oh, the other day, about three or four years ago. And I went and drove, drove the corner. Out the corner of my eyes, I saw this red Mercedes. Yeah. And at the moment, I thought, oh, that's my car. <laughs> so I just knew I had to buy it. So I went back and bought it. Right. It worked, worked wonderfully. Great car. Yeah. But I just knew. I just knew, so, and so, that's intuition working. So, being a logical guy like I am, I'm still I'm still struggling with the distinction between emotion and intuition. Yep. And um, what you've suggested, intuition comes to you as a sort of a momentary a hunch. Hunch. It's a hunch, okay. and and it's immediate. Okay. It's absolutely immediate. It's it's a really it's a really tough one. It really is a tough distinction because only practice will give it to you. Okay. Uh, law enforcement office. Law enforcement officers have it a lot. Yep. They'll be. They'll look at someone and they'll say something wrong there. Okay. They can't tell you what's going wrong, but something wrong. And by their their, their life's often up for grabs. So they go. They be right. Better be right about this. Yep. And so they'll they'll just be able to feel it, you know. Whereas emotional, now nah, you get all emotional. It's oh something's going wrong, and yes, and people start to panic and start to make silly decisions. Right. But when when you get when you get into intuitions, you don't make this when The idea is you've got to get your intuitions, and they have to be the the last decision you make mm-hmm. they that's got to be the one you make decision and you're not going to be emotional you're not going to be out out of control it's not going to be taking you over yep. you just got this really deep deep inner feeling okay and i'll tell you i'll tell you where, where it is later because there's a special place it's the secret weapon actually in business is secret weapon the secret weapon is is the place where the intuition is and when when you hear this you're going to say oh of course i knew oh, that, that that's so obvious but it is and no one uses it okay so no one uses it from the spot Great. So, so really, I suppose uh, as we go through this call, we're going to really understand how to find that intuition and how to distinguish between the yeah. emotion, which is like from the picture I'm getting, it's something that pushes us to do things, where intuition actually pulls us in the right direction. Yeah. Look, the other thing about emotion is, emotion is really concerned about your safety. Emotion yeah. it wants you to survive. Okay. It really wants you to survive. Now, one thing we do know, if you're in business, yeah. And you're, you're wanting to go further forward. And as you know, the only only business which is really functioning properly is a business going forward. Correct. So if you're in a business and going forward, um, emotions are going to try and stop that because whenever you go forward, it's a risk. Whenever you, whenever you go forward, you're going to be going into the unknown. You don't know what's around the next corner. Right. You, don't know what, you don't know what's over there. And so um, and emotions don't like that. They want to know. So a lot of people, and a lot of business people especially, they get, get caught in – in the intellect, they think, well, you know, when I, when I want more information, I really want to know, I really want to know. Well, if you really want to know, you can't solve the problem. Right. You can't. See, the problem you want to solve, the answer is not where the problem is. The answer is above the problem. Right. And you've got to break out of where the, where the problem is into where the answer is. And, you know, you've got no idea what that's going to be. It's a, it seems to be a huge risk because you've never been there. And emotions are going to try and block that. Right. Intuitions will take you there. Yep. And that's the two different driving forces. Right. That's why I say intuitions, they're hooked into life's purpose. And it's almost a spiritual thing. It's it's, it's really, well, comes into this, what I, what I call high-level weird stuff. You know, it just, there's, there is no explanation and you cannot, you cannot, okay. you cannot um, uh, define it. It's just there. So bringing this back to the, the topic, which is the family business. Yep. Um, I suppose there's a real combination of emotion and intuition in there. And yep. if you if you see a thriving family business, it's like clockwork. You know that each of the family members understands their, their their strength and their skill. They understand how to communicate with each other. They don't put emotion out in front of them. What they do do is they use their intuition and they can read each other. That's right. So really, that's a that's a synergy that occurs when yep. you've got um, people who are in relationships working together as well because they have this intimate understanding yes. of each other. Basically, they've 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 got their emotional stuff worked out. Excellent. Because you, we said before, you know, emotional patterns are set and they get stuck, but not all not all emotional patterns get stuck. Mm. Because as we go through life, we have experiences, and usually each experience we're supposed to be upgrading ourselves. Yep. And um, uh, if we're not upgrading ourselves, that's when we get stuck. So okay. we've got to, and and then if you are stuck, then you go and get yourself unstuck. That's all. Okay. Someone like me doesn't fix any problems. It just gets you unstuck from your problem. 
So really, I suppose, and and this is where you know this is gridlock is what I'd call it in the family business where yeah. you know the egos get in the way. Um, there's emotional relationships that get in the way, yeah. and people sort of end up in this frustrating situation where they can't do anything. Yeah. And really, all you're suggesting is they just need to get out of that gridlock and open up the yeah. channels of communication. Oh, look, yeah, that that they do, they do, and and I'll I'll say this: you cannot, you cannot get out of yourself. Right. You can't. You've got to have someone from our side come in and say, "Listen, you're being stupid, and this is where you're being stupid." Right. Well, not quite in those terms, of course. No. But. But but basically, if that if, and if you can actually nail that right there, yeah, then you get unstuck, and not only that, but you've actually unstuck yourself, okay. and, and away it goes. Yep. Um, yeah. Look, here's here's the aspects of business. Okay. Money. People yep. always focus on money. Yep. They always want to make money. Good. There's your means. Then you got the uh, the the mental side of it, mm -hmm. and that is being well to work together and do everything like that. Now now basically, that's what we're taught at school, which is the most important. Okay. They're, we're taught at school, just focus on the money, focus on 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 the on the have a good intellect, and you'll make a lot of money, and you'll have a happy, happy life. Right. Well, I'll say there's also this thing called emotion. Right. And that's that's the corrupting influence. But if you've got your emotions pretty well um, handled, yeah, then you're going to be going forward. But the most important thing is not so much whether you got them handled, because you're going to have emotional problems. Sure. Everyone does. Every relationship, every relationship almost divorces at some stage in their life, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. Some, about 50% do, but, but you know, the ones that go forward, they've almost divorced, but they've learned how to handle it. So what the secret is with the relationship is you've got to have the means to deal with your emotion. And, of course, the most important one is that. A holiday. That's the lifestyle. <laughs> That's a lifestyle. lifestyle. High-level weird stuff. Yeah. See, the high-level weird stuff is all about who you are yep. and, and about getting it together. And so, he's a he's a good thing. Yeah. Once you get into this intuition stuff, you'll know you're there because it's easy. See, you're talking about businesses which which seem to do it. They walk along and they just do it really easy. Mm. It's because they've got their, they've got their stuff handled. Yeah. And it's simple because it's high level weird stuff. It'll just do it for you. Okay. You know. Um. This is, this is quite key because you know we often talk about goal setting in business. We often talk yeah. about how simple it is to build a business as a structure, and inevitably people trip over their own feet. Yep. And they get busy doing busy stuff. And, you know, two people in exactly the same business, one will be highly successful, not working so hard, but just doing smart things, and the other one's struggling. That's the one. Now, intellectually, they're both the same. Absolutely. So in we fact, at, sometimes the, the one that's struggling is, is intellectually far, far superior to the other one. Yeah, so it doesn't, smarter doesn't mean better, no. right? Because uh, what we're talking about here is uh, intuition versus emotion. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're like superpowers in a way, aren't they? Well, they they are like, they are like superpowers, and the intuition that is the superpower because that's that's where you got to allow yourself to be connected. And okay, here's the challenge. Yeah. So you're sitting there, and you're going along, and you think, righto, here we are. Look, that factory over there. I really want to buy that. I really know that that's the right factory that I should buy. But oh, there's something. It's just not feeling right. I'm being blocked. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm talking about a, a person I was dealing with one the other day, actually. Okay. He's, he's trying to buy this factory. Yep. Because the factory is in. He knows he's got to get out of it because of, there was a there was a flood. The water's the water's um coming into his factory and 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 the the landlord doesn't want to get, get doesn't want to fix it. So he thought, okay, I'm going to go and buy one. So yep. he goes up and try and finds a b big block of land and um gets the factory and it's all it's all perfect, but it just doesn't work. And he's struggling away. It just doesn't work. Okay. So he just gives up. Right. He just he just stops. He said, look, I'm just going to let this go. Anyway, about three or four weeks later, uh, he found that he was sort of driving past and saw this block in Thomastown, mm -hmm. which he bought. Yeah. Perfect. Everything's perfect for him. It's like as if there's someone up there guiding him. And okay. he'll he'll and he's not a religious man at all. He's got no time for this stuff at all. But he says, Geez, Rob, you know, he said, oh, I'm having trouble saying no to you on this one. <laughs> because it's just all so perfect. Right. And it's like do you have – because it takes courage to let yourself go intuitively and say, I'm going to go yeah. with my flow. Okay. Now, I know better than this, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to see if it's going to work. Oh, okay. I'm not I'm, – yeah, it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage. I think it does because, you know, we sort of – we're bringing this back together because we, we're talking about family business. Yep. And a lot of times the conflicts that arise are really the words that are not spoken. The conflicts that arise are really just how you feel about someone 
or how you feel about what they're doing and how it impacts you and what you can't do and what you can't say. Yep. And so this becomes now the throttle and it holds people back from either uh, moving someone from a job that is, not, that is not best for them because they don't know how to approach it or it could be just, a, you know, it's just simple things that aren't spoken about that just create this sort of emerging problem that just gets worse and worse over time. Yeah, and it's the not speaking about, that's the part because what people aren't doing is having the crucial conversations. That's what families don't do. Yeah. They don't have the crucial conversations. Okay. Um, because you know uh, they they get caught up in their in their family emotional stuff and and mind you look I think seventy three percent of businesses in Australia mm -hmm. are family businesses okay. and uh, and some of the most successful businesses we've got are family businesses yeah so so it's a, it's a good model to have when you get it right okay but so, if you don't get it right you're in trouble excellent so so really look today's topic was five dangers facing family yes. businesses and how to overcome them yeah so so maybe we'll just jump into the first one what's the biggest danger that you believe that family businesses face succession planning okay so let, let's talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. so when we talk about succession planning we're talking about okay we're talking about my father my father had a farm mm. and his succession plan was, was one day son all this will be yours okay okay but he never asked me <laughs> and he never made a fund because I was on a farmer. We worked our butts off. Yeah. And I oh, that's okay. One dollar is all this will be all. No, I, I thought no. Now I I ended up by saying don't want it, thank you. Yeah. And I remember I, I, went, I left the farm up there and then up then there hills around Melbourne North. Yeah. I left the farm and then I end up in in a factory in Richmond putting uh, plastic coating on top of um, uh, coat hangers. Okay. You know, just <laughs> dipping it in the powder and pulling it out all day. And yep. I was sitting there, and I remember sitting there one day, I'd been there for eight hours, and I thought, this is a life. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make much sense, you know. And, and I look back and I think, whoa, but I was just desperate to get away. So yeah. succession planning starts way, way back. Yeah. Because you, if you want to be succession planning, well, hey, guys, there's got to be something in it because too often the, the father, and the father is, is who's, who's run, he's the driver. Whoever's created the business, they are the driver. Yeah. And they've got some drive there. And boy, have they got drive. Yeah. But drive ain't good for succession planning. No. Drive is not good because this is drive. You do it my way and it'll work. And it will. It will work while you're alive. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they get to 50 or 60 or 70 and, and, and they don't know how to let go. Yeah. And they can't let go. And, of course, the young son's sitting there and father's sitting there and saying, well, phew, don't really think I want to give it to him now because, you know, he's just not, he's not, like, just not, like, not like I was and he's not. You know why he's not? Because you haven't been let made mistakes. Interesting. You've got to make mistakes and fix them yourself. I was working with a father-son business, exactly these symptoms, and it's very common. And the father, you know, I, I remember speaking to the set, them separately, and I said to the father, because they came to us and said, we need some help, yeah. um, because, you know, things just aren't working out as we expected within our business, and it came down to this thing of succession planning. And I asked the father, I said, so, so explain to me, you know, what drives you to go into business? And he goes, you know, I came to this country with nothing. And I built this business from the ground up. And I built it so that my kids wouldn't have to suffer like I did. And I built it so I could pay for their schooling and send them to private school and send them to university so they could become professionals. And, you know, now my son works for me and he's lazy. <laughs> and he doesn't work, you know. And unless I'm there telling him what to do, he just sits around like he doesn't need to do anything. And so I wrote all this down and then I interviewed the son. And the son says to me, you know, I've been working with my dad for a while and he drives me nuts. He will not let me do anything. Everything I do, he checks. He micromanages everything I do. And, uh, you know, I went, I went back to the father and I said, so let, let me ask you this question. What was the most exciting phase of your business life? And he said, when I came here with nothing and I built this business from scratch. And I said, so why wouldn't you give your son the same opportunity to grow that you did. Why wouldn't you just let him go and make some mistakes? So it's exactly the same story, yeah. and it's very common. That that, that was my story, mm. and so I left. Yep, I left, and that, and that's what they do. So and, so and 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 my father would have said that um, oh, I was lazy, and I was because I was passive resistant. Yeah, if you're not gonna you're not gonna help me, or stuff you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Let's, let's you know you can leave all you, you can't make me work. Said yes. I. The interesting, uh, the interesting opposite side of this is family businesses that actually succeed going from first generation to second are substantial. Yes. And if we look at all the big family businesses, you know, we, we're talking about succession planning. We're talking about sons that not only take over from dad, but improve the business. Yes. So Kerry Packer. The possibilities are endless mm. if it's done correctly. So, yeah. so we talk about this succession planning. 
what's your suggestion? So how do we overcome this? How do we overcome this this danger? Well, look, okay. Really, who? What the what the the the, the boss, the the creator, the person who's who's done it? They've got to let the people make their mistakes and fix them. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Damn you, doing it. Yeah, you've got to let people make the mistakes and fix them. That's the important thing. The problem is they make mistakes and father jumps in and fixes it. Yeah. Mother jumps in and fixes it. So it's, and, it's almost like being a control freak. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. this this person who built the business mm. says, "I built this. I mm. run it. I own it." You work for me. I'll show you everything that you need to do. And then one day when I can't work anymore, then you can take over. Yeah, and you say, well, no, I can't because I, I don't know because let's face it, I know the 80-20 rule and I know that, that, that 80% of the things I do are not going to work, only 20% are. So I want to have a go at making at, at doing those four things that don't work and find out for myself. And I want to I want to find out how I fix it when these things start to stuff up because yeah. they're going to stuff up. And I want to find out if I can do it myself without someone coming in and telling me what a rotten star I am, fixing it your way. Because let's face it, you've had your, you've had, you've done your your eighty percent of mistakes. That's how you learn. Okay. So, so really, like if we if we bring it down to the nub of it, the succession planning, the way to overcome this issue is to make sure that there is a succession plan. Yeah. And part of it is teaching the leadership skills, the management skills, yeah. the entrepreneurial skills, so the ability yeah. to make mistakes and learn from them. To the successor, mm. part of us teaching it, but you know the biggest part is allowing it to allowing it to happen, allowing it to grow. Yes, and that's the hard. You've got to allow this. You've got to allow people to, to grow and develop. So part of the planning is actually letting them make mistakes. Oh, and and letting them make mistakes and then fixing it. So letting them make mistakes, learn from the mistake, and fix the problem. And fix the well. mistake. Don't jump in and fix the mistakes. Yeah. Um. Just just think think of when you when your child learned learn to walk. Mm -hmm. Did you let the child fall over and did you let the child get up again? Absolutely you do. Yeah. Because if you go and pick up the child all the time, guess what? They never learn how to get up. And, that, and they'll, they'll start not getting up. Fantastic. So that's succession planning. So what's the next danger that's facing the family business? Conflicts. Conflicts, of course. Conflicts. Conflicts and arguments. Yep. And, that, and that's, that's what they, that, that, that they do all the time. So, and there's only one reason why people conflict. have conflict. Okay. There's one reason, one reason only. So why do people have conflict? Someone is not listening to someone else. Ah, so what you're saying is conflict uh, equals lack of listening skill. Conflict equals lack of listening. Conflict equals lack of communication. Con conflict equals lack of being heard. We have two things in our life that we really need more than anything else. The first one is to belong, and the second one is to be heard. Right. To be actually heard. Okay. And if you if you are so absolutely sure you're right, and let's say, for instance, say you are damn sure you are right, and you are right. Yeah. And you've got somebody there that's, that's putting up another, no, 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 I want to try it this way. Mm. Don't say no at right. this point. Let them talk. Let them tell you exactly. Let them justify exactly what's going on all the way through until they're finished. Because when, when you're doing, when you listen to someone like that, you're actually earning the right to be heard. Right. And then there's no reason to go into conflict. They'll go into conflict because you're not being heard and they, they want to become more powerful. And they want to really get you. And, of course, you go back to conflict because you want to protect yourself. Right. So, we, so we go back to our primal instincts. Absolutely. <clears throat> right, right back there. Bang, bang, bang. And, you know, and a lot of conflict, it's, it's um, you know, I, I said before, it's emotional. So it's really two-year-old tantrum behavior. Well, it's tit for tat. You know, yeah, he did this, so she did that. Therefore, uh, I'm doing this. And, you know, yep. stuff them. La, 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 la. And I, I remember, like, one of the most important quotes I've heard on this is from Stephen Covey. Yep. You know, in his seven book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he said, seek to understand first, first yeah. then be understood. And the patience to actually listen to someone when you know you, or you think you know you're right mm. and you think you know they're wrong mm. is so difficult because you're already second-guessing your response. Yeah. So, and, so, you're, and therefore you're not really listening to what they're saying. Okay, so really the key to success, in, this danger of conflict is really poor communication. Yeah. That's all communication isn't being able to communicate well, it's being able to listen yeah. Well, look, next time, if, if you get into a conflict with, yeah. with, uh, with, any, with any family, yeah. and this is what I do with Annie because sometimes she has the, the um, poor judgment to get into conflict with me because she doesn't <laughs> think I'm right all the time. <laughs> but And when, when, if that should happen, uh, then the first thing I do, and, and Annie does it too, to be quite honest, but we, because we have a little strategy, and the first thing we do is I'll stop. I stop what I'm doing and I listen. Mm. And all of a sudden I listen, and the conflict goes out of the argument. Okay. Now, Let's say she is totally wrong. That's fine. Then I can say to her, "Look, I think that's not right. I think that's. I think we're going to do it this way anyway." She's happy with that because, hey, she's been heard. Right. And I'm not. I'm speaking from a position of of knowledge now. I'm not speaking from just a position of I'm being stubborn. 
Yep. Okay. So, so it's, it's interesting. What we're saying is that, uh, you know, this, this whole conflict in family businesses, this whole conflict in family full stop, purely comes down to our, our inability to communicate effectively. And when people think of communication, the first thing they think about is their ability to speak, speak. as opposed to their ability to yep, and, listen. And, yep, and listening is not listening. Um, the communication problem is not about talking. Um, it's about listening. It's about listening. And normally, look, to be quite honest, it's about the parent not listening to the child. Okay. Because guess what? The child hasn't made those mistakes. The child, they don't know as much. They right. really don't know as much. And they're also very, very uh, conflicting anyway. And so they're, and they're trying these things out and want to try this stuff out. And as parents, we sit there and say, no, no, no. Can't you see it's this way? And of course, it is this way. But you've got to have to find a way to be able to let the child or let the young person find out for themselves without them destroying their business. So when we talk about parent-child, metaphorically speaking, we're talking about senior partner, junior partner. Yeah. We're talking about the entrepreneur versus the, the, yep. or the husband and the wife. We're so, talking about husband and wife here. Yeah, we're talking all that sort of stuff. So really what, what the, the parent is, the person who thinks they know it all. Yeah. And the child is the person that's saying, mm. I'm trying to learn. Yeah. And the parent exactly. speaks expecting the child to listen yeah. but in reality it should be the other way around and look it might be that the, the parent does know it all too yeah they, they may even know it all they're still still not going to work yeah whether you're right or wrong doesn't matter it's not gonna, it's not going to matter because you can be a, you can be as righteous as all hell but hey guess what <laughs> your business has gone down the tube so, so so let's talk about overcoming conflict because this is this is a big one right succession must be important for the longevity of the business yes. the conflict is a daily occurrence in a lot of family businesses how do we deal with that how do we stop how do we overcome that issue one, one simple way, which is so simple it's complicated, mm. you listen. You've got to act, just absolutely listen and listen to, to a person. Because if you're listening to someone, if you listen to someone, they have no need to be in conflict with you. Right. And you think of the people you are in conflict with, they're, they're not listening to you. Okay. You can't you can't get your message across because we have to be heard. Mm. But if you hear them, the conflict goes down. And I can walk, oh, God, I don't agree with that, but hey, um, she did listen to me, so and and uh, she doesn't know what my thoughts are, and she decided so fine. I've got to, I'll I'll go along with it. I'm yeah. more I'm more happy to go along with it and support, providing providing I, um they've got my if they point my point of view. If they don't have my point of view, I don't want to help them. Right. I don't want to be anywhere near them if they don't have my point of view because they <laughs> it's an insult. Right. It's an absolute insult. Okay. So really, we then go back to emotion. So Absolutely. we have conflict, we go to emotion, emotion then becomes this whole stupidity, yep. stupidity thing. So yep. you know, conflict, yeah. emotion, stupidity, bad decision, yeah. business goes when out. When you get emotional, just be, 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 be sure the energy running your business is stupidity. Yeah. See, one of the tools that we use in coaching, we use a thing called a whiffle. Yes. Which stands for what I feel like expressing. And it, and it comes from the old Indian talking stick. Yes. And the old Indian talking stick was a method the tribes used to use, and they'd have a stick and they'd say, while you're holding this stick, you speak and no one can interrupt until you hand the stick to the next speaker. I've got one of those sticks at home, yeah. Fantastic. So, you know, we often talk about business and team meetings and family conflict and we say, this is how you do it. You whiffle it out. Yeah. So you get the Indian talking stick and you start and someone has it and while they're talking, no one else can interrupt. And that's right. they're finished and handed over, they get heard. So they're little tricks, but really what we're talking about with this conflict is once it arises, it's very difficult to circumvent yeah. or curtail because we go into emotion so maybe people just need some sort of tools like that if if you that that talking stick by the way i've got one of those at home and you said fantastic i thought i haven't used it for a long time <laughs> <laughs> but actually I, would, I we do we don't need it now we do use it but if you just have that let that if you have a little trick like that that can change a whole a whole dynamic and that, that can have ramifications throughout the whole business just that one yeah uh, people people don't realize the value of 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 listening and being heard it's 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 paramount. There's there's nothing more important. I think that's one of my next uh, my next thing. Is it? Great. So so we we talked about two points. Let, right. Let's go to the next one. So you know two dangers we've talked about. What's the third danger that's facing the family business? Nepotism. So what is nepotism? Well, what's the cost? Ne nepotism is is that that um, you're you're promoting other members of your family. You're you're put your you're giving you're making them favourites. Right. They're, they're the favourite. Fine. Okay. Don't mind them being the favourite because of course they're going to be the favourite. But at what cost? What about the mm. other guys back there that are really doing that? What, what about the, the sore wars of the business, the, the ones you've had around for years and years and years? What about those ones? How do they feel? Right. Because if they don't have a career there, they, they, then they're going to they're going to get up and off and, off and leave you. And, and I would say that often those people will leave you at the most crucial times. So this whole, this whole notion of nepotism is favoritism. Favoritism. Yeah. And what it means is that, you know, we have this family in business and mm. often we have other people who are non-family members. Now, 
I can imagine the challenge. You work in a family business as an employee and all of a sudden you're an outsider. So even though you might be fantastic at what mm. you do, you don't have that emotional connection. You don't have that tie. No. And, you know, that old saying, blood sticker than water. Uh, but you feel you've earned the right to have that emotional connection. You feel you've earned the right to have a bigger say. You feel you've earned the right. And you feel this new person coming in mm. doesn't hasn't earned the right. And they, they probably haven't. Right. So, um, yet. Yeah. I, I, I think it's it's something which, which we can accept. It's something we do accept, mm-hmm. given the right circumstances, providing we're all heard, providing we're all recognised. Right. We, 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 like all of us, we need to be recognised for what we are. Because a lot of people, a lot of those people don't want, they don't want to be powerful in the business. They don't want to run the business themselves anyway. Yeah. But they really want to have a nice, secure employment where they've got a lot of say. And, and, uh, and they, they, they don't want... They don't want some young upstart coming in who doesn't know the business to come in and go and sabotage their future as well. Right. So, so really, this whole management of nepotism is actually understanding that the, the, the yeah. I suppose, the hierarchy within a business from a effectiveness point of view. Yeah. Versus, you know, my son's coming into the business, so therefore I'm going to give him a nice office in the corner and I'm going to give him a job which he may or may not be qualified for. It's the impact that that has on the other employees. The other employees, it's the impact. But the, the other employers will accept him coming into the business and being given an office over there and all of a sudden and going around. And the other employers will, will give it that he's he's there and he's by birth has a right to be in that business and to learn. Yes. And they'll help him learn. Yes. They'll, they'll help him learn. But they still want to be recognised for themselves as well as helping him learn. And because, yeah, they have a vested interest in this family business continuing. Okay. So so, yeah. so how, how do we overcome this issue? Because this, this, this is a pretty strong one. You know, we see businesses where, you know, the husband and the wife work together. And the employees go, well, we don't want to upset the wife because, you know, she's going to have a in the ear of the husband and, you know, so we better do what she wants even though it doesn't make okay. any sense. I like, I like the way Lindsay Fox did it. Yeah. If Lindsay Fox, all his kids did apprenticeships. Right. They all, you know, they they all went out there and they earned the right. And so they're okay. all powerful people in their own right now. But, hey, they've they've, they've done the hard yards. He may, he may, He put them in positions. He made them learn. So as a leader in the business, what he's done is he said, you know what, you can come into the business, but I'm not going to treat you any differently than anybody else. Nope. And yeah, you've you you better go and prove yourself first. How, how does that like? Okay, so let's let's take the point of view of the son or the daughter yep. in, in this situation. She comes into the business. She feels she has a right. It's mum's business. It's dad's business. I've come into it. I, I'm I'm actually this is my inheritance. So their ego is pretty high because they say, well, I don't need to know what I'm doing because it's my business. How do we deal with that one from her, their point of view? That's a, that's a real that's a real tough one. It's mm. an easy answer. Yeah, but it's a, it's a tough thing to do. Yeah. No. No. You got to earn the right. Okay. I don't look. I think if someone doesn't earn the right, if you don't if you don't have you're becoming the, to earn the right, mm. then you're in trouble. And I mean your business is in trouble too, not okay. just everybody. Right. They have to earn the right. They have to actually, and we, we go back to have to earn the right by going back and making their eighty percent mistakes and fixing those mistakes yeah. and doing the being stupid and doing the stupid of things mm. and learning how to actually do it on do it in their own right. So yeah. nepotism is really a, the, it's when you protect your the, the, the protect your family that you're being a little bit tough. The, the way I, I deal with this as a coach is often I'll say, look, you know, th- there's two roles that a family member plays in a family business. Number one is a worker. Yeah. Number two is a shareholder. Now, as a shareholder, your interest is profit, not a place to work. Yep. So the shareholder's point of view needs to be that every resource is efficient. Sometimes some t- family members are better off not working in the business but owning a share of it because they don't have the skills that are required. But this is a difficult conversation. Mm. Um, but, you know, what we have found is sometimes the, the family members are better at specific jobs which are not senior jobs. Mm. Sometimes we'll have a team member who's actually no good at sales, not interested in, in delivery, but you know what? They actually like keeping the office clean. Mm. And uh, that's okay because they get paid for that as a job, but they also get the shareholding as a shareholder. So it's not an active role, if that makes sense. Yep, I was um, being, I was working with a family, and uh, basically there was one one of the uh, members just wasn't up to it. Yeah, just couldn't do it, and would never be able to do it. Yep. Now they they stayed a shareholder, mm-hmm. but they moved out of the business. And that that sort of ties back to our conflicts and our communication. Because mm. it's easy to take an employee and say, look, you're not meeting your KPIs, you're not up mm. to it, you better shape up or ship out. But we can't do that when, when, we, when we've got a relation in the business. Family well, over. maybe you can't, but the business will do it for you. Well, it'll do it by uh, reflecting in the profits 
and mm. by shipping everything out if it's not careful. Right. Because you know the, the business isn't anything in itself, and most most families, if they don't handle this nepotism thing, anything, they end up by ripping off the business. Right. And that's that's the that's you know the old uh, I know I don't know about you, but when I first heard about the the goose that laid the golden egg, yeah, and then all of a sudden the um, uh, the guy that's collecting all the eggs thought he wanted to get the lot, so he went and got the goose and killed the goose. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and thought, how stupid was that? No, I'll never do that. I see it all the time, though. We, we, we all kill our goose. Yeah. We got it. And, and the, the business, that is that is the goose. And you've got to look after the goose. You've got to really feed the goose well and look after the goose properly. Otherwise, those golden eggs, they'll stop. And a lot of them do. They yeah. just stop coming. So the family businesses, inevitably, if they go down this tra- this trap of nepotism conflicts yeah. and they go into high emotion, it just becomes a, a, a battlefield. It becomes a battlefield, and also um, the ones who are oh, – this is a real generalisation here – the ones who are least able to ha- to perform are often the ones who are most highly emotional and most manipulative, most emotionally manipulative, and uh, they're the ones that really can sabotage a lot of stuff going yeah. on because if emotion gets out of control in the business, it will sabotage the business. Absolutely. Good decisions do not get made under emotion. Yeah. Absolutely. No, so, so, so really, once again, I suppose we, we come back to that whole idea of conflict and, and, and you know, how to deal with it and uh, just calling things as they are. Now, I've, I've watched people walk away from the conflict because it was just too hard. Yep. They didn't want to ruffle the feathers and, and you can see the impact that it's having now. Uh, some of the hardest decisions in a small business, in a family business, is when we, start, when we realise there's an incompatibility between, uh, and it could be partners. Mm. Could be husband wife partners mm. or it could be brother sister partners mm. they got bought into the business by mum and dad they work together one outshines the other by miles but they're 50 50 partners so we've got this conflict that we can't we can't deal with well the way if when you get those conflicts and we have them believe me i had them when i got divorced yep and i also had them when i've been married to any yeah because everything that i thought i'd gotten away from when i got away from from uh, my first wife who's a lovely lady by the way don't get me wrong <laughs> yeah but all, all, all come up, all come up with any, you know. And here I'm saying, well, how can I be so, how can I be so unlucky to find someone else just like that? Da da da. Until I had to sit back and say that was me. Yeah. But the way I used to get, I way to get out of the conflict. So I stopped one day and I just thought, I'm going to listen to her. Yeah. And once I started listening, I started to get the message. Right. And I hadn't been hearing it. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't been hearing what was really going on. And, and and why wasn't I listening before that? Because it was very threatening for me to listen. Yeah. Because she started saying things about me which I did not like. And this is, this is, you know, as I said, with businesses, we're married to our business. Yeah. So rather when those conflicts are there and somebody's got to walk away, the idea is the dominant person needs to stop and just listen. Right. If they stop and listen, they're going to find out a lot more out than what they will by, by shouting the person down. Right. But they might not like what they hear. However, they've got it and the other person they'll find all of a sudden stops attacking. So you, take other, all, you take all the sting out. You, yeah. you take all the, the other the person doesn't have to attack. They're going to sit there and they're going to try and help you. Yeah. Because guess what? They really want you to succeed. Mm. And they want you to run the business because you can run the business. They want you to run the business. Okay. So really, I suppose, and that, that ties right in with our next uh, our next danger, um, which is really, you know. And, Communication. And I, I suppose we've been talking about it. We talked about it a little bit there. It took a bit of the thunder away, but that's okay. So when the talking stops working. Yeah. And uh, basically, as I said, it's communication is not about talking. It's about listening. So sometimes, you know, if we talk about communication and listening, sometimes we need a mediator or a counsellor or a mm. coach, just someone who's a third party who says, my job is actually just to uh, make sure that you guys communicate. And I've seen this often. Yep. You know, we'll have a business, a family business, and we'll bring them into our initial consultation for coaching. And one of the very first things we do is we talk about personal goals. And it's a very odd conversation. Some people go, what are we talking about personal goals for? We're here to talk about our business. And I go, yeah, but you got to realise that the business is a means to an end. Yep. And I've watched a husband and wife or brother and sister after an hour of talking about personal goals saying, I didn't know that's what they wanted. Yes. Yes. And when they say, I didn't know what that's what they wanted, it means that they haven't been communicating. No. <clears throat> so I suppose what we're looking at here is that the communication is at multiple levels within the business. Mm. It's transactional when there's issues, but it's even planning. It's really understanding what is the other yeah. person here for? What do they want out of it? Yeah. Look, there's an old saying, mm. two things you can't do. Talk and listen. If you are talking, you aren't listening. End of story. Yeah. If you if you're talking, you're not listening. 
Like, I'm not listening to you now, I'm talking. <laughs> and you were talking before and I was listening. <laughs> you know? And, you know, someone said it wisely one time. They said you've got two ears and one mouth and you should use them in that proportion. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and so, so really, I, I suppose we've talked about this communication, but it seems to be the common thread is that these people aren't. So how, how do people overcome this? They've got a communication breakdown within the business. They've got a, a family member who's just not listening. You know, it's a two-way street. How do I get someone who's just not interested in listening and I listen to them and they just wrap it on and... You're saying that that should defuse the sting. What happens if they just keep going? Um, they can't, well, then, then the issue becomes, is it, when you said before that sometimes people need a consultant or someone to come in there and show them how to listen, that's very true. Mm. That's very, very true. And so people start, they, they start rubbing on, rubbing on, rubbing on, and then they start, and sometimes you'll be sitting here listening to someone, and they start talking, and then they start building and building and building, and they get emotional. You're saying nothing, but they're still emo they're still being, they're being listening. Emotional. For me, I'll sit, I'll sit there and just say, and just say nothing, and just let it keep going for a long time. But if I'm watching other people, then I'll, I'll stop them and say, what's, what's, what's going on now? What are you saying? Right. Yeah. You know, what are you really saying underneath it? What, what are you really saying? Like, what's going on there? Because the person has to own their own stuff, what they're really and truly saying. Okay. And what do you think is happening to that person? Because yeah. when you talk, when, when you're talking, you're not, most people when they're talking, they're not thinking about what the other person's saying. Yeah. And meanwhile, back at the back of the ranch, the other person's sitting there and they're trying to construct their own, mm -hmm. what they're going to say next. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing goes, goes bad. But as I said, the number one thing is, and this is what I do, when, when, things, when things are going to crap, when my relationship's going to crap, I stop and I listen. And Annie and I have got good of it now. We've got very good at it now. Mm -hmm. But I, I stop and I listen. Or Annie will stop and she'll listen. And it just diffuses the whole thing and then we can go on from there. Yeah. But there is no, there is no that's, that's the number one. There's other things to it, but the number one, someone's got to stop and listen. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So we've talked about communication now. I know the fifth danger is something that's interesting because you mentioned it on the phone. I actually don't know what it is. Yep. Um, so maybe we need to top, j just jump straight in. So what is the, the fifth and final danger that's facing the family business? There it is there. The secret weapon. The secret weapon. Which and is? that's, well, that is my wife, that is my daughter, yes. and that is uh, her daughter. Okay. And so there's that's that's the succession fan, but it is the intuition which women have. It's the intuition that women have. That women have. That men don't have? No, not to the same extent. They don't have it. They uh, don't yeah. damn well have it. And I have seen so I've been to businesses where they've been broke and they've been going broke. And I'll sit there and I'll talk to them for quite quite a while. I'll say So lady, uh to the wife, you knew this, didn't you? Yeah. And she'll sit there and say, well, yeah, I guess I did. I said, yeah. Hmm. Why didn't you tell him? She said, oh, it's not my place to tell him. Mm -hmm. But you knew. And meanwhile, you're going broke and you knew what, what, what had to happen. Yeah. yeah. And husband, you, you knew what she was on about, didn't you? Yeah. yeah she, she actually knew. You can, you can see that. Well, yeah, I guess she did. So would you listen to her? He said, well, I don't know. She never said anything. And, 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 but no, I'm not going to listen to her, basically. Yeah. Because I run the business, she doesn't. Now, the point is, with your spouse, especially women, and by the way, women, women are leaders, and they love to lead from behind. Right. When they say, behind every man, there's a, a successful woman, or behind every successful man, there's a woman, a good woman, and that's, to a large degree, that's very, very true. Women are very happy to stay in the background and lead from behind, and they do lead from behind. Right. And... And they've got all the intuition and they just live on the intuition. So sometimes they go, no, what's going on in the business? But boy, I'll go and say to Annie, sometimes I have, have clients and I'll go and say to Annie, and I've got a problem with the client. I'll say, Annie, I want, I want to run this one by you. Mm. Da, 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 da. What do you think? She says, oh, um, um. I said, no, forget it. Mm -hmm. I said, why? I said, because you start thinking, just when you get intuition, come and tell me. And oh, okay. Because you see, an intuition comes immediately, not, yep. not 0.5 of a second later, it comes immediately. So all of a sudden we'll be walking along. She'll say, "Oh, by the way, what you got to do is this, 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 this," and she'll be spot on. She's got no idea, mm. but she just knows. Okay. And I don't ask me that's in that ninety nine point nine 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 five percent of stuff out there, <laughs> which I which I don't particularly understand. But what I'll say is that's your secret weapon. The secret weapon is to actually listen intuitively or listen, to accept the intuition that that your um that your wife's got. He's a, hang on, I'll get, tell you a quick story. So Annie and I were going to invest ten thousand dollars. We were, and uh, and I went and I went and said to Annie, I said, well, look, okay, um, well, we'll go and do this because I'd, I'd done the figures and it was good. And she yep. said, no, nah, I don't know, I don't know. 
I said, well, well why not? She said, oh, come on, why Why don't you? Why? Give, give me the answer. I need some answers. I'll go along with that. Why not? She said, oh, I can't do it, so you just go ahead and do it. Yep. And I said to her, I thought, no, hang on. She always says that, and it always goes wrong. Mm-hmm. I said, no. No, from now on, Annie, I'm going to accept that when you say, I because it feels wrong, yep. I'm just going to go along with that one. Right. And that's what I do. And right. I saved myself $10,000 because it, 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 it took 30 minutes before the thing would have went to shit. Okay. So really this whole this whole idea of intuition and capitalising on intuition and women's intuition especially. Yep. Um, is is critical in this whole in this whole nature of moving forward and getting clarity on what's happening. It is, the and the, the, you'll find the businesses which are going so well, yeah. which are really doing well, they're doing it intuitively. Okay. And you ask well, the business people, um, think of any great decision you've made in, in business, and I guarantee you're working on your intuitions. Okay. Because those those intu and without recognising it, but the intuitions make all the difference, and it's the big one that, that, that that's cut down, and I think that's where they've got to go. Okay, so so really, I, I suppose we've covered a lot of ground today, but it sort of comes back to a very common message, which is get emotion out of the way and start focusing on intuition and communication, yeah, and making sure that people are being hurt so that the emotion is drained, yeah, and so that we're actually working with either real data or intuition, which is not emotionally charged. That's right. Okay, so it sounds uh, so like you, intuition which is not emotionally overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. Right. So so really, so we've talked about some basic skills on how to do this. Yeah. Is there any sort of uh, sort of summary statements or anything to wrap this whole conversation up that you can give us sort of some pearls of advice? Okay. The biggest problem you've got going, the biggest problem in your business that you've got going now, is also is also the the um, the the biggest opportunity. Right. That's where the opportunities for really are, and I mean opportunities in, in a lot of different ways, because the problems get bigger if they're not dealt with. Mm-hmm. You put a problem away, it doesn't get dealt with, it just grows. It yep. grows and it grows and it will not go away right. until you deal with it. So if you've got a problem there at the moment, yep. deal with it. Now, the 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 difference between the people who have got successful, really successful businesses and the ones that aren't so successful is that the ones who are successful are dealing with their problems all the time before they get big. And right. if they do get big, they, they sit there and they listen and they, they get it right out. It's really, you get right down to it, it's very, very simple stuff. It's so simple, it gets complicated. But mm. it's it's about not saying your problems are bad, saying, hey, no, those problems, they are my greatest resource because they they can be the guide for where I need to go in my life. So really, what, okay, so my interpretation is that the problems that are in front of us are usually the key to success. They are the key to success. All we need to do is work out how to deal with those problems. Yep. And the day that we learn to deal with them, they go away. That's right. And the way that, and to, to, to learn to deal with them, firstly, Look on as being a good thing, and second, listen, listen. just listen, listen to your intuitions, because the intuitions they have the answer. Mm. They're not an answer you like sometimes, but they yeah. do have the answer. Okay, fantastic, Rob. So look, um, let's wrap things up. Thanks very much for your insight. It's been interesting. It's My been pleasure. enlightening, and I know for some of the listeners there, it's actually probably exactly what they need to hear right now is mm. to just get them focused in the areas that they can work on. Um, for further information, right there. Go to my website, www.whydivorcedoesnwork.com, yep. or actually you can email me or you can phone me. Phone me. And you buy my book. Yeah. Buy the book. It, it's, it's, you know, and it, it's on Amazon.com, just under, look under Robert Hillier. Yeah. Um, actually, if you want if you want to, you can email me and I'll send a, a direct link to the book because okay. it's, it's there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, because, look, my frustration, the big frustration I've got is I see these relationships falling over, I see businesses falling over, and yeah. I see lots of things, family falling down, and they don't have to. They don't have to. All they're doing is being faced with a challenge, and the, to, and the challenge is saying, I want you to be more of who you are. And people say, oh, it's, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, and, <laughs> and, they, and they, just, they, they don't go there, and I'm thinking, boy, if you faced that challenge, your life would be so much better. Yeah. So, and it's... But people just get a little bit stuck, that's all. Yeah, so they just need to understand that the fear of what might happen with these conflicts is really just a thing that's blocking them. Yep, that fall out everywhere again. Maybe it yeah. comes up again. Yeah, so maybe having those tools and being able to deal with that is the smartest way out. That's all you've got to do, yeah. Just, Fantastic. Just deal with it. All right, Rob, well, thanks very much for your time today. It's been My a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I've and, quite enjoyed it. I look forward to hearing more about these sort of stories and uh, reading through the book as well. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.